Hey guys, welcome back to Film Truth. Today we'll talk about how you start opal mining. Let's head into it. Opal mining in Australia. The story of opal mining in Australia is one of danger, rebirth, and triumph over adversity. Humans have treasured opals and mined them in various locations, such as Kenya and Hungary, since 4000 BCE. Since the 1880s, however, Australia has become the world's primary source of opal due to an unlikely combination of geology, fortuitous finds, and two world wars. In the process, a thriving opal mining culture has developed around the mines. Approximately 95% of the world's precious opal, including black opal, is produced in Australia. Lightning Ridge, the world's largest producer of opal by value, produces this most valuable variety. The town of Coober Pedy, on the other hand, is the largest mass producer. A mining truck is raised on poles above Coober Pedy's town sign, indicating that the town's culture is deeply rooted in opal mining. In Coober Pedy, a teenage boy whose father was a gold prospector discovered opal around 1915. Although the first opal claim was staked soon after, opal mining didn't take off in the area for some time. Returning soldiers used to living in trenches sought their fortune in the opal fields after World World War I. Following World War II, a slew of Europeans fled their war-torn homelands to work in Australia's opal mines. As a result, 60% of Coober Pedy's miners today are of southern or eastern European descent. The opal rush was in full swing by the 1970s. The Aboriginal Australian word Kupapiti, which means boy's waterhole, inspired the name Coober Pedy. Another type of hole, on the other hand, has become quite dangerous. Miners have dug over 250,000 shafts over the years, making Coober Pedy a dangerous place for tourists to wander aimlessly. How people tend to mine. Approximately 1,700 people work in mining-related jobs and live in town full-time. Many people live in underground houses to avoid the scorching desert heat. To avoid collapsing, these houses must have ceilings that are at least four meters high. Many homeowners, or home diggers, have unsurprisingly discovered opal while excavating. In the past, explosives were sold in grocery stores, and opal was discovered by blasting the sides of houses. They even blasted their way into a neighbor's house on occasion. Residential mining is now prohibited. Many miners, however, exploit this floor by expanding their homes to add more guest rooms. Underground shops, hotels, and even churches, such as the Serbian Orthodox Church of St. Elijah, can be found in Kuba Pedi. Also, Make sure you're writing your thoughts in the comments section. Methods to get started. Small groups of miners, rather than large corporations, work together on opal mining ventures for the most part. Miners dug their 3 to 10 meter shafts by hand in the beginning. They reinforced the walls with timber to keep the dusty, sun-baked soil from collapsing. They used windlasses to lower themselves into the shafts, then used buckets lifted by the windlasses to remove the waste soil or mullet. Miners used shovels, pickaxes, and sometimes homemade explosives buried in pockets of soil to dig tunnels the old-fashioned way. Miners discovered veins of common opal that twisted and turned throughout the rocks with any luck. They followed these veins in the hopes of finding valuable opals. The veins either vanished or plunged to unfathomable depths in the majority of cases. This method is, of course, very exhausting, but it's one that you can practice to start your opal mining adventure. Miners occasionally come across opalized prehistoric animal or plant fossils. These remains had turned into opal material over millions of of years. Modern Mining Methods Mechanized opal mining first became popular in the 1970s. Coal weld drills for shaft digging and tunneling machines or front-end loaders for horizontal tunneling are common examples of advanced equipment. The mullock excavated by machine or explosives is transported by automatic bucket tippers or massive pipe vacuums. The soil is then either transported to a truck-mounted drum, like the one atop the Coober Pedy Town sign, where it will be emptied later or shot out by the vacuum into a pile near the shaft. An experienced miner is said to be able to tell when opal has been discovered by the sound of the vacuum. Miners who come across valuable opal must extract it with extreme caution, as it can be quite fragile. This is probably a better method once you've delved deeper into opal mining. Deciding how to mine for opals. Mining always necessitates a cost-benefit analysis. Some lone miners prefer to start small with their businesses. They use cable cranks or rope ladders attached to their trucks, for example, to lower themselves down abandoned mine shafts. 
Miners who use advanced methods, on the other hand, can dig quickly. They can also excavate test shafts before committing to large-scale excavations. Bulldozers are occasionally used by these miners to remove surface layers of dirt, while workers on the side look for traces of opal and inspect opal veins for valuable material. Other options include dynamite and jackhammers. Naturally, the more advanced the method, the more expensive it is and the greater the risk of damaging potential opal veins. The hazards of of opal mining. Opal mining is a hazardous business, particularly for those who work alone. Tunnels with insufficient oxygen are prone to cave-ins. They can also be flooded by sudden storms. Above ground, workers face extreme heat, while below ground, they face claustrophobia. Furthermore, opals can be found in rock veins, pipes, or kernels. As a result, miners never know where opal will be found until they begin digging. The first opal finds in Australia happened by chance. A horse, for example, kicked up a chunk of opal, or a teenager picked up some gleaming stones from the ground. After that, miners dug near these locations. 95% of all opal discovered today is worth grey white potch, or common opal, with no phenomenal properties like colour play. Personalities and dreams. Cuba Pedi's specialty is white opal, so called because of its milky body tone. Spectacular finds and eccentric characters abound in Australia's opal fields. Many miners left their previous lives in Cuba Pedi in search of peace and opals. Some people had busy professional lives. Others were ahead of the curve when it came to eccentricity. One of Cuba Pedi's must-see tourist attractions, the colourful home of Crocodile Harry, belonged to a former crocodile hunter and self-declared Latvian baron in hiding. Of course, there are the everyday miners who hope that the next next foot of ground will yield an opal that will turn them into millionaires. For the most part, hoping for this jackpot keeps them underground, searching for a glint of colour with flashlights. They're occasionally rewarded handsomely. These are two additional methods. Opal divining. This is similar to water divining, where a miner uses a rod and can feel or see movement when there's water present. In this case, some people will look for opals underground in areas where a particular scrub grows. Many people have attempted to find opal or slips in the earth using scientific instruments, but none have been commercially successful. Many miners today will go back to old mines to look for opals that have been left behind, or they'll go open cut and combine several claims. Open cut mine. Mining. Because all of the direct opal is removed, this method of opal mining is very expensive, but it ensures that hidden pockets of opal are never missed. Open cut mines require a $100,000 bond, as well as the cost of digging and machinery, and you must backfill even if no opals are found. The best method, according to old timers, is to throw a hat in the air and start digging where it lands. Others advise spending between $5,000 and $30,000 on a productive claim that has produced some colour. Although no one sells a gun claim, some top stones have been discovered this way. What do you think about opal mining? Do you plan to start it? Let us know in the comments section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.